Welcome to this week's video, I'm Aaron Ross, and I'm gonna be walking through how I use the iPad Pro in my workflow as a photographer. Now you can see that this setup is a little bit different. I am not using my Fuji X-T3 to record me. You can see that literally in frame. That is gonna be my top down looking at the iPad. So here, and I'm gonna do my best not to hit that with my head. I am recording myself with the Osmo Action, but most of this video is going to be the top-down view showing you my workflow, so hopefully that's not too big of a deal. But let's go ahead and jump in. A lot of this is going to be about my data management, and then I'll get a little bit into my editing process towards the end of this video. But to start off, let's talk about the equipment that I'm actually using. So I'm currently using the iPad from 2018. This is the iPad Pro 256 gig and no data, so I only have Wi-Fi. I have the Apple Pencil, which I find super crucial to being a photographer and editing photos on the iPad. Without it, I just don't think that it makes a whole lot of sense. I then have the Anchor Hub. This is a six in one. I did a video on this just a couple weeks ago, so I'll link that up in the cards for you and down in the description. This is a change from last year. So I did a video just like this last year talking about my workflow, but a lot has changed. And one of those are the dongles. So I used to use both of these. This is the SD card reader and then the, I forget exactly what they call this, but this has a couple of different ports, kind of a media dongle. And I would use this to plug in external hard drives. Well, I now don't use either of these. So I put these off to the side and I use this Anchor 6-in-1. If I pop this out, you'll see that this has a headphone jack, which we won't use in this video at all, but it has both a micro SD and SD card slot, a USB-A port, USB-C, this is only a power pass-through, and then a HDMI port. Other pieces of equipment are going to be my external hard drive, so I use this SanDisk I forget exactly what they call this extreme portable SSD. This is 500 gigs, so this is my backup, especially when I am out in the field or traveling. This is where I do all of my backups of all of my files, which we'll get to shortly. So I have this SD card here, and this has some photos on it that we'll go ahead and import and show this workflow. So I pop that into my hub. And there's a couple ways that you can do this. You could import all of your photos into a files app and then into your photo editing app. For me, what I've decided to do is I go straight into Lightroom and you can immediately see that this has a device connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. It's now gonna show everything that lives on this SD card. And for me, I need to create a new album now, I use this as my main device. This is not necessarily just a tangential device to my actual desktop or laptop. I am not concerned about how this is gonna show up in a catalog on my desktop because I don't even sync these files over to my desktop in that way. So I go ahead and I create an album. We'll call this Lakefront Glaciers. I'll go ahead and select all. You could go through this and decide if you want to just in individually import some of the photos. Again, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and import all of them. I hit import. This will take a couple of moments just to copy over the files, and it will let you know once it's done copying over and when you can take out that SD card. So now that you can see the copying is complete, I can now safely disconnect the device. I'm not gonna do that right at this moment, but I can hit okay. And what it's gonna start doing is actually importing into this album. And so it'll take, again, a couple of moments just for all of them to show up in here. You can see this counting up. This is currently 39, 44. It'll count all the way up. I think in this case, it was 99 photos. So it'll count up from, to there. There's kind of two scenarios in which I need to think about backups and making sure that I have a third copy of these files. Because right now, I have them on the SD card and on the iPad. But if I'm out in the field, then I need to make a third copy, at least this is what I do to feel comfortable. So then I use something like this, going back to my external hard drive, again from SanDisk, this is 500 gigs, and I go ahead and I move copies over here, which will, which will do in just a moment. 
but if I'm at home, I go ahead and I bypass the external hard drive, portable hard drive like this, and I've now moved to using my 2012 MacBook just as a backup machine. I go ahead and I pop that SD card into my MacBook and I have kind of my backup files and hard drives that I have here as my kind of archive and I'll move those there. And then each month I back up my archive hard drives up to the cloud on Dropbox. So that way I will have something physical in the office and something in the cloud for my archives. And then while I'm actively using things, I have something on the SD card and on the iPad to make sure that I have enough redundancies to, if something does happen, I have something to fall back on. But if I am out on the field, like I said, I end up using this external hard drive. So then I can plug that in again into the USB-A port. And instead of being in Lightroom, I will go back to the Files app and see the external X, which is the external hard drive, and Untitled, which is the SD card. So first I'll go ahead and go into external X. And now in the iPad, one thing that I love is the multi-screen. You can have two of the same app open next to one another. So I will go back to the main navigation, go into that SD card. Now I'll see all of those photos there. I'm gonna go ahead and select all, open up this photo folder and click and drag right over there. Now, this is passing directly from the SD card onto the external. It does take a little bit more time to pass through that way. It's a, just a little bit slower than importing directly to the iPad. So do know that, that if you have a large set of files, it may take a little bit of time. So maybe do that when you get back and you don't need the iPad to edit anything in that moment. So now that we have everything backed up, our files are on the SD card, the external hard drive, and on the iPad, we now feel confident in going and editing these photos in case anything gets messed up or destroyed, we have files ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump back into Lightroom, see all of my files here. What I like to do is I go ahead and I cull these photos by using the flagging system. They have a star rating system as well, and but this is just always the way that I have found to be the easiest. So I go ahead and I flip through these and I have this little system where all I have to do is flip up if I like it, flip down if I want to really get rid of it, or I can just leave it neutral. Now, this is not a photo that I particularly love, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip through these pretty quick. Now, if you haven't seen the video of where I took these photos, I did do a little bit of a vlog about this, so I'll link that up in the cards as well. Now, if I go back, I now have filters and I can select that filter and see just the photos that I flagged that I actually want to edit. Now, I have done quite a few editing videos here on the channel. I'll leave a playlist in the end card for you as well as in the description that is my iPad editing playlist. I have edited all sorts of photos and shown different apps. Right now I do use Lightroom, but I've also used Pixelmator Pro and Darkroom. I particularly like Darkroom on my iPhone. It's what I use for some of my quick edits. And I think they're a great company doing a lot of really cool things. But I have decided to stick with Lightroom here on the iPad for some of my more intense edits, mainly because of selective edits and the use of the iPad Pencil to do so. So let's go ahead, I'll show you a quick edit here. Let's go ahead with this one with this guy that I met out on the lakefront. Now I do have some presets that I have collected over time. I also have one of my own that I call Crisp and Cool. It's a little dark, but I really think if I go in and I boost the exposure, that's gonna be a cool, moody vibe. Now this one in particular, I'll walk through some of the edits that are included here. In terms of the profile, I do use the classic Chrome camera matching profile. Uh, I just really like that in this instance. It's not one that I use for every single one of my photo edits, but it is one of my favorites. Then coming in, you can see I was adjusting that exposure there. I've dropped the contrast just a little bit and increased my whites and decreased my blacks actually to boost that contrast a little bit. 
And then in my tone curves, this is one area that I really do like Lightroom as a photographer on the iPad because it is right over your image and you're again interacting more with the image itself as opposed to just all of the sliders or you're using a mouse and feeling even more disconnected. You get to interact with the screen which is right on top of your photo. You can see I can even play with this further. And this is my overall tone curve, but I can go into individual channels as well and maybe pull, I kind of like where this is at already. So I don't think I'm going to make too many changes. Maybe boost the blues a little bit more. And then under my colors. I don't think I adjusted my temp or tint on this one, but you can see I boosted the vibrance. If I pull that back down, you're going to see really in the water, some of that blue go away. And so boosting it there, I really like the color of the, the water on Lake Michigan. And then I pull the saturation down just a tad. One thing I'm noticing is his skin color gets a little out of whack. That is not his natural skin color. So I can go into color mix and what I think I'm going to do is go ahead, I think the hue is off for one. So we're going to bring that up. Again, this is a way for you to just click on this. Instead of going through in sliders over here, I can click on that, touch down right on the color that I want to adjust. And slide that around if I wanted to do the saturation, which I think I do. I want to pull that back just a tad as well. I have that adjustment. And another thing I'm noticing is that I don't love this framing 100%. I knew that this was going to be better for Instagram, and that's kind of what I was shooting for. So I'm going to go ahead, crop that down to a 4x5, and a plane is going overhead. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm going to wait a minute to see if that uh, for that to pass. In my effects, now in this preset in particular, some of these are a little heavier than I normally go. But I do have my clarity up to 24. Could pull that back a little bit, but I kind of like the crunchiness that it's giving in this one. Dehaze, now I, again, I do like a little bit of that crunch that's in this photo, so I'm going to leave it about where it is. And vignette is at 16. I could pull that back maybe just a tad to brighten it up. Details. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. I don't usually put this into presets because I do think this is pretty image specific. So first I'm going to use my masking tool. And one thing that is cool about Lightroom is if you're sliding over here, you can hold down on the image. And as I adjust this, you'll see what it's going to be adjusting in the mask. So now that I have it there. When I do go ahead and adjust my sharpening, it's only going to be impacting where that mask was still being applied. Additionally, I have adjustment brushes. So there are a couple of them that I can use. It's both the adjustment brush, a radial filter, and a gradient filter. So let's say I don't really need it in this image, but if I wanted to, well, let's go ahead with the radial filter. And again, come into him, into our subject here. I can just adjust that to be on him give him a pop of light and there you go. So if I zoom out, you can see that he has that filter on. And again, I can adjust a little bit. I can erase some of that around him if I wanted to. So if I just really wanted to hone that in, you can get really fine tuned into what is being adjusted, what's receiving that pop of light. If it's kind of around something else and you really want to fine tune that. So there you go, that is an edited photo right here on the iPad. And then once I'm done, there are a couple of export options. You can go directly to your camera roll. If you just want something quick for social media that you don't care too much about the settings, you can do that. Or to your files if you're gonna maybe move this to a website or something that you wanna share with clients. You want a something a little bit more manageable outside of the camera roll, you can do that. And you can also go into export as, and this is, I think something that a lot of people miss in Lightroom on the iPad. 
This is where you can do a lot of your custom export settings specific for use cases. I can also do things like a custom file naming, output sharpening, color space, all sorts of things right there in my export settings. Go ahead and hit the checkbox. And now it's gonna ask me where I wanna save those images. And I can go ahead, I can save those images to the camera roll from here or save to files just like I had before. But now it's gonna be exporting with my custom settings. So as you can see, this is a pretty robust workflow and something that I think professionals should take a closer look at. For me, this is something that I found super convenient and helpful as I have moved pretty much all of my photography workflow, editing, data management, file management, whatever you wanna call it, over to the iPad. Now, again, I am doing a lot of my in-house backup archiving on a old MacBook that I had laying around, but for me, that is a decent trade-off as opposed to using the iPad to upload to cloud files. But if you have any questions or different ways that you do this, go ahead and leave those comments down below. I would love to learn from you. I can tell you from last year, there were a lot of comments that really helped me and made changes, active changes to my workflow. So make sure and do that. If you liked this content and wanna learn more about iPads or see how I use them for photography, go ahead and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna leave a playlist in the end card for more of my iPad Pro editing videos so that you can go ahead and check those out. Some of those I go into more detail than I did here. But until next time, I'm gonna go make some photos. I hope you do too.